the recording and start the stream. Welcome to Horsin' Around, a dumbass cast. I am your host, as always, Nick Bergadante, and with me today I have two lovely guests, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Brad. Cool. All right, cool. That went nor- incredibly normally. That uh, that was the greatest bamboozle of all, guys. Nice, dude. You really, you really got close. me good there. Uh, and today, I mean, I think the 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 number one thing that that we were talking about discussing is you guys both played The Last of Us Two, and you had some uh, differing opinions on it. So I'm I'm curious to see how how this plays out. Um, I guess the best way to go about this is maybe just give like each of you give general thoughts and then if you i I think it sounds like the story is probably going to be the biggest decisive divisive thing so then just go into specifics on on disagreements about that as as you see fit as you go along but um i guess if we want to start with brad like (laughs) oh yeah big spoilers big spoilers for live this is a very much a last of us two spoiler cast so if you haven't played the game yet and you want to experience it for yourself untainted by the opinions of others uh and without you know plots details revealed to you ahead of time uh just tune back in for next week probably um but yeah, uh, I guess Brad, what were your general thoughts on the game? Also, I haven't played it either. I just don't care enough. I still haven't played the first game, but I know how that one ends, and I know how this one ends too. But like, I I'm definitely fuzzy <laughs> Jeez, on the details. Ruin it, dude. I look. I uh, just I don't know. I've got a lot of stuff going on. I just haven't gone around to Last of Us too. So, uh, yeah. I'm gonna throw thing out there. Sure. Uh, I got spoiled before the game came out. Mm, yes, and yes. I feel like that very much affected what I thought of the game. Yeah, because you seem to have a very because I remember you were talking about you 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 saw the leaks and you were very soured by them, and that seemed and then surprisingly you still gave it a shot. I was surprised that you you were even gonna get it, but I guess a friend lent it to you, so you you figured why not, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I wanted to. I've been waiting for like seven years to play it. I wasn't gonna not play it. Okay. Even though I got spoiled on the, the big stuff. Lil, did you did you see the spoilers before it came out? Spoilers were coming out, were, were happening, and I did everything in my power to avoid them. So the only thing that got spoiled for me, were, like while I was playing the game, I found out about like like about things like like I heard I like the Rat King existed. I saw a picture of the Rat King. Oh. And, like oh yeah, so, so like and and I heard about like uh what was the other thing? Some shit about uh. The, the, the fact that they go to Santa Barbara, like, I knew that that was a thing, but I, knew, I only knew that after I started the Abbey section, so, like, all, I, I've avoided all the big spoilers that that came out during that big leak. Mm, uh, although good. I did that's go good. back and read them, or at least, like, read what I, what I could of them after, like, after I finished the game, and I don't understand why people got mad at those spoilers, because, like, they were right. Like, like the <laughs> they were right. Were, they were correct, but, like, none <laughs> of the things in the leaks made me mad, but also I was reading the leaks after knowing the context for them. Right in the game the uh when it came out basically what it was was joel's death scene came out yeah and then they said this happens midway through the game and you play the rest of the game as joel's killer and you hunt down ellie and then they leaked the uh, cutscene of ellie getting beaten up by abby in the theater and that was presented as the end of the game and that's Mm -hmm. that's what all the outrage was about okay Okay. the spoilers that i read were not that so i guess that was different. I guess since since then, the, whatever the original le- leaks were had gotten like corrected to match what actually happened in the game. Mm. Um, okay, I, I guess people like, people are kind of getting mad at that, but like not so mad that you wouldn't give the game a chance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely not mad enough to send death threats to people. I think that's ridiculous. Well, yeah, that's well, just people kept that, sending that is... them to her even after that came out. Like that, people are just fucking psychotic. Yeah. Yeah, that was that's ridiculous. I don't yeah. stand with that. I think at a certain point people are just fucking mad at women in video games. Like there's some fucking advanced f- mind fuckery that people are just so deranged that they're just like, "Oh my god, two female leads, they killed the male lead. Women are taking over." Re It's just like, "Bro, okay. Okay. Take your take your nuggies and go back to your to your cum pit and uh go go bitch somewhere else." I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess I I don't really have a a stake in the game, but it seems like, excuse me, I don't know what the fuck that was. Um, but it seems like it just, people wanted, like in, in a similar context to like, I don't know, fucking Star Wars. I don't, I, I hate bringing up the red herring every time, but like people wanted things to go a certain way and then they 
didn't, and because did of not. that, they're they're mad. Like I don't know. So Brad, I guess what would you? How, what did you not like, and then what would you have liked instead? Do you have any idea of what you would have yeah, liked yeah, instead? Yeah, I've got or... a couple things that okay. I would have liked I think better. one thing that we can probably get out of the way a lot easier is gameplay. Like, do you have any issues with, with like how the game played? Before oh, no way. Play? Dude, the game the game felt really good. My one thing was you can't do an air attack. So you have this jump button, but you can't do an air attack with the jump button. Oh, yeah. when You, you, you kind of yeah. got to hit the ground first. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I liked it, too. I, I played on hard. What did you play on? I played on uh, Survivor. Oh, yeah. That's what I did the the last month. Mm. So if I thought hard, the... I, I felt like it was hard to get stuff, but I I never really ran out of materials. I was never like yeah. How, yeah. how do I like MacGyver these like four rags into like enough material to kill like three clickers? I was always like kind of prepared. So I kind of wish I played on a harder difficulty. Mm. Yeah. But they 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 make uh, like resource scavenging like a really key component, right? Where you you every yeah, room yeah, that you clear, really you good, gotta but... you gotta dig through and stuff like that. And they um, add like, like, the the, like this like safe cracking mechanic where like every, there's a couple places in throughout the game where like you'll find a safe and somewhere you'll have to figure out what how what the uh, what the combo the, is the, the combo is via like you know like you find it in the world or like one of them be like it was the day that you won the lottery and you gotta find this lottery ticket pinned on the wall somewhere else and find the date on the ticket like. Mm. like it was kind of fun, and that'll get you a lot of like upgrades and stuff, possibly earlier than you could have otherwise, which is yeah a fun reward for people who like were wanting to explore everything. Yeah, yeah. fun, yeah, sure. fun little hook. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, no, I, like I haven't, I haven't heard any bad things about gameplay. It seems like most people agree that that's yeah. that stuff's been fine. Um, yeah, I'm, was, I'm, I'm not like a huge like, last. Like, I, I didn't play the first one. I watched the playthrough of it. Could I didn't have a PS3 or PS4, and, and I. I only borrowed a PS4 for this one, um, so some people seem to be kind of bored with how not difficult it was, but they also were probably a lot more experienced with the game than I was. So, right, yeah. Was this game? I mean, there were there were definitely challenging parts. There were some parts I got stuck at for like a decent amount of time. Oh yeah, I'm trying to remember what it was. There was one section where I would kill like a bunch of enemies and get like laid out by one guy, and then I'd be put all the way back at the beginning of the section. Oof, that was yeah. rough. Harsh, harsh checkpoint system, kind of. No, it's actually super forgiving. That's oh. why I was surprised that that one part was not giving me any checkpoints. I think hmm. it was at the very end, as okay. Ellie in the uh, the compound. Gotcha. There was a and part of not getting checkpoints. If you want harsh, harsh uh, checkpointing, they added permadeath after. Yeah, I saw that. Like, no, like, I'm not touching that, dude. No <laughs> way have, am I touching. There's, that. there's grounded, which gets rid of like your hearing and enemies do way more damage to you. And there's mm -hmm. permadeath, which you, you can set either full game. Um, per act or per chapter, or, or, okay. or per day, I mean. Yeah. So like, you could like limit how bad it is, but even, no matter what, it's still like fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You're just you're just cutting um, down the checkpoints significantly for each one yeah. up until there are no checkpoints. Um, but yeah. So those came out. Nothing pretty cool. And they added a bunch of like new rendering modes, where you can have the game like you're like in the Matrix or some shit. What? Or like like eight bit pick eight bit like pixelated rendering for the game instead of like. And then they, they have like eight bit audio filters, and they had yeah. Kind of like I wanted to check that out. Like cheat codes too, where like you can have your melees like one shot people who have infinite crafting and things like that. So it can be like um, it can look like a fucking PS one game. Yeah. Um. So there's a lot of like fun stuff they added in with, with like the one point zero point five patch, but that was like that came out the day I had to give the PS four back. Um. I didn't get to try any of them out. I like mm. unlock them and then. I had to walk back to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool! Poor timing. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. That's that's cool. They got that post-launch support. Is there? Yeah. I know there is multiplayer in The Last of Us One. There's no multiplayer in two, or or is there? Nah, there isn't just... yet. I don't know if it's planned or not. Hmm. The people are saying it might be standalone okay. because this this game is like I don't know twice as long, like genuinely twice as long as the first one. So each like each of the two acts is like as long as the first game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's long. It's long. it's very long. What was what was your guys's like time to beat like from start to finish? How many hours? I, I it no it took me about thirty. Is what I, it came out to. I it was spread across like like a month and a half of like playing other games and coming back to it. Right. And PS4 doesn't have like tracking for how long you played. I think so. Yeah. I never got like a, like a final answer for how long it took me. They should really do that. Or maybe it is something in the PS4, but it's just, like, hidden under layers of whatever. But, like, that's just a nice stat to see on, like, any game. See how much of your life you've devoted to this 
medium. I hate seeing that number. I hate that my number one most played game on Steam, even though I haven't, I legitimately have not touched the game in I think like a year, is Sid Meier's Civ Five. Like I have <laughs> hundreds. I think that's of, a common one. Hundreds of hours in that game just because of the nature of it being such a long-winded game uh, And the next closest thing I think it's siege and it's like a hundred plus hours less than than that And then the Master Chief collection is in third and it's also like another hundred hours less than it um, You know what my uh, highest game on Steam is I'm about to blow your mind Is it it's not well it can't be spacecraft spacecraft's not on it's Steam. unturned. Oh God, no no, not the Minecraft clone. <laughs> Please, no. no. I haven't touched it in many years, but it's still up there. What's the What's the hour count? Is it like? It's like it's like a hundred. It's not like a huge. Oh, number. okay, okay, that's not that bad. Yeah, I'm a little embarrassed that I have like I, something. Is it? You see, it's either three hundred or five hundred hours in Sid Meier's Civ Five. It's fucking ridiculous. I don't even know how I got that many hours in it, but. I digress. So, yeah, what were what were the things that you didn't like in the in the story, Brad? Okay, um, I'm going to start with a general structure thing. I think that the the structure of the game could have been handled a little better. I think for me, it would have been more impactful if they were intertwined, as like opposed you've... to you have you have the three days as Ellie and then three days as Abby, mm -hmm. and what happens is you play Ellie's three days. And then you get to this big confrontation part. Yeah. And then it rewinds, it rewinds back to three days before. And then you play as Abby's three days leading up to that. Mm -hmm. And then you play as Abby and beat up Ellie. Okay. I think intertwining them made have, might have made it work a little bit better. Because at the beginning of the game, when you're killing all these characters that uh, Abby's friends with, you don't really know anything about them except for their Abby's friend. Mm -hmm. And then later in the game, it's like, this is this person. And that's kind of the point, but it just yeah. didn't land as well for me. Because mm, I, I didn't have that same attachment. If they, uh, I think the the point was to put you in Ellie's shoes. Like Ellie doesn't give a shit who Nora is, other than she's Abby's friend and can get me to her. And right. if, if you care about them, in in a, if you care about you know who who they are, um, before you get to the point where like you care about all of them at the same time, like then you're at a point where like you're killing them as Ellie because you have to, but you don't really. Like, like, you are in a position where you're killing them because you have to, but Ellie wants to. And, like, there's times when, like, you don't really want to do it. Like, like when, like, Ellie's beating the shit out of Nora, that makes people, you know, pretty uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. But, like, that makes you uncomfortable because it's, like, a bad thing, not because you care specifically about Nora. Mm-hmm. So, like, so, like, then, like, later on, you're like, oh, I meet somebody and, like, oh, they're gonna die. I know that. But you still care, like, about, like, who they are just because you're playing with somebody who does. Right? Yeah. Like, right. Right. Yeah. They, so that is, was the, like like the twist they were going for, I think. Yeah. Is it like they are? Are some people mad, or like maybe Brad? Are you mad that that they kind of? I I don't know. It sounds like it's they kind of villainize. Well, not villainize because she's she's trying to get revenge because they killed Joel, right? Was that was a, that's the like main inciting factor for right uh, for Ellie going but, after Abby. But um, the, the the twist that happens halfway through when you start playing as Abby is. Abby's dad is a doctor that Joel kills at the, at the at, hospital at the, at the end hospital. of the first game. Oh, okay. I see. Like Abby That's was, a, was, was a firefly. Uh -huh. Joel killed practically her whole contingent, killed her father. Right. Um, and then got away scot free after dooming the human race. Right, right. Because Joel, yeah. yeah, that was the end of the first game. It's like uh, Ellie had the cure in her. Like genetically, she she had something that could be used as a cure, but. To get it out of her, they'd have to kill her? Was that it? They had to yeah. kill her, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then Joel and so, could not lose another daughter, so he right. went in and, and saved her. Um, but now this th this game is sort of going into the consequences of those actions, I guess. Um, she, Abby, much like, like years on, tracks Joel down and kills him. I see. Um, and in the scene where she kills him, because like Joel finds Abby just in the, the snow getting chased by zombies. Right, um, she goes off on her own, and he finds her and saves her from getting bit. Mm, and then you have like um, a little chase scene. And then Abby takes her back to her friends, and then they ask about what what his name is because they know that they know he's there, but they're not sure. And yeah. they said his name's Joel, and he's like, "Y'all, act, act like you've heard of me." And then Abby shoots him in the knee, and they fucking beat the shit out of him, and then they they kill him. Yeah, they um, they torture him for a while. And mm. then Ellie finds them because she don't she like she, she figures that Joel's like 
hasn't checked in for a long time and wants to make sure that he's okay, finds them, they tackle her to the ground, she has to watch as they, like, like, like Joel's, like, already on the verge of death, um, and they kill him in front of her, and then, um, they're gonna, one of them's gonna kill, uh, Ellie, and Abby's like, no, we don't have any business with her, we're just here for the smuggler, and they leave. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that scene, um, I've just got one big question there. Well, well, two things, I guess. But there's a part where Tommy is looking into the middle of the room while, while Joel's standing in it, Tommy's looking over at him. And then off camera, Abby's getting the shotgun ready. But the angle that Tommy's sitting at, he would be looking directly at her and he just doesn't react. Who's Tommy? I thought there could maybe have been a better way to handle that. I mean, you would have seen... I mean, Abby shoots Joel in the knee after, what, like, two seconds? Like, like, there's not time for anybody to react. That is an almost, like, immediate, like, she grabbed it and shot him, right? Yeah, like, didn't, she was holding it, and then she cocks it, though. Like, it's not like she just, like, pulled it out of somewhere. She walks up to him and then goes... Phew. And the whole time, Tommy's staring in that direction. But that's not the big issue I had with that scene. The big problem that I have is the travel from Seattle to Wyoming. So they, they make a whole big point in the game that Abby is the best scar killer. Like it's the best scar she's the best scar killer in the, the wolves. And what then is Mel it? is the scar big, killer. The oh. scars are okay, so some background <laughs> for you, Nick. There's a war going on uh-huh. in Seattle okay. between the Washington Liberation Front and this cult called the Seraphites, who the wolves call the scars. And okay. they are fighting for control of the city. Mm-hmm. And so Abby is a lieutenant in the WLF, and she's really good at killing scars. She's like the best at it, yeah. and they say that a couple times. Mm-hmm. But they, at the beginning of the game, uh, on the be- basically before the game happens, Ellie says Abby says that she has a lead on Joel's brother, that he might be in a town out in Wyoming, mm-hmm. and then she gets permission from the leader of the Washington Liberation Front. For her, the best scar killer that they have, one of their top medics, and is it like six other people? It's six it's, other soldiers. I mean, they were all the people from that outpost. They were all at, right. Yeah, they were all at uh, the Salt Lake City. But my question is, it's eight hundred miles away from Seattle. Okay. And he lets them. He lets like some of his best people go off to this place where they might not even have, you know, Joel's brother might not even be there. It's mm. just, she has a hunch that he's there. Like she heard he might be. And I don't know. It seems kind of strange that in the middle of, they're fighting a war, like they're fighting with the Seraphites the whole time. And in the middle of it, he's like, yeah, you can just, you know, travel 800 miles away for basically see if he's there. And if he is, you know, kill him and then yeah, come back. Like a personal vendetta it, at that point. So It's not like they're at, so like there are active skirmishes, right? They right. aren't in a war in the sense that they are by the end of the game. At the very last day. Right. right. Like, like that's like if, if, if and the, he doesn't let he doesn't let Abby even go find Owen then because yeah like, that's hey, that's the other we're, thing we're about to like engage in a like active conflict when they, when they left that was not that, that was not the case the case was just hey we're fighting them we've been fighting them for years right nothing has changed between now and yesterday and the day before and the day before. So him him letting them go isn't that crazy because I mean as far as Isaac's concerned like sure it'd be better if I if Abby was here but right this isn't a scenario where I want to this isn't a hill that I need to die on where Abby can't leave because I believe Abby will come back right it's just the the distance traveled is also a really odd thing for me and it happens at the end of the game too right after Abby beats up Ellie at the uh, the theater. So Ellie has her arm broken, her face is bleeding, Dina's pregnant and sick, Tommy just got shot in the side of the face, and they get back to Jackson, which is 800 miles away, and I think all they have is one horse. So that's, the, the a, that's a damn good horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the travel in the game was something that I felt like was a little bit off for me. Mm. Like the time, the time scale of how, how things happen. Um, but that's like that's like nitpicking stuff. Yeah, yeah I was them, kind of crossing one is like never really shown right outside of like right. We see a little bit of the of them on, on horseback going to there, but the WLF have cars. 
If they, right. had, they did have vehicles. Them getting to Washington would not be out of the ordinary. Would not be impossible. Crossing the country has been shown multiple times across this. Across this, right. Not out of the ordinary. That was the premise of the first game. Um, so it's not impossible to do. Um, it's just that they were like completely just, broken. Like, like Ellie's arm was broken. Dino was sure, pregnant and, and sick. They, Tommy can't walk anymore. They didn't have to go all the way back while injured. They had to get out of Washington. They had to get out of Seattle at most. And then they had, they, they could take the time they need to recuperate or as, okay, as, as yeah. recuperate as well as they need to. Cause Tommy doesn't really ever get that much better, but like, no, he does. <laughs> like you don't have to be a hundred percent to get out of Seattle. You just have to get out of danger and then get the hell out of there. Right. Um, I guess that brings me to my other point. All of the characters in the first game, and even most of the ones they introduced in the second, they're all just destroyed by the end of it. Like, nearly every character is dead, mutilated, or just, like, nothing like they once were. You think it's, like, feel like, too it's much? Just, maybe a little bit. I mean, I mean, like... Stories change characters, right? Yeah, that's true. The Last of Us is a universe that is going to not give a shit about literally anybody, right? Anybody can die at any moment. We give a shit about Marlene, Marlene's dead. You give a shit about... Uh, Joel's kid. Joel's kid's fucking dead, right? Like nobody gets gets plot armor. Nobody gets to come out of this unscathed. But especially in a game, it's like all about how the cycle of violence is bad. Everybody who died was part of that cycle. Everybody. Right. Mm. Like Dina gets out of it pretty okay. Yeah, she's the only one she's that the gets only out. One. Of it. Um, and and that's because she the second time around was like, I'm not doing this again. Right? If she'd gone with Ellie, she'd probably be dead. Is Dina's right. Dina was Ellie's girlfriend, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I remember her from the trailer. So this might be bearing the lead a little bit, but I uh, tangentially, or I mean, it is related. Um, you know, I remember the stories coming out after the game's release, where the developers were having to like deal with PTSD-like symptoms from having to animate these incredibly, apparently gruesome scenes of violence, um, and I'm wondering, like. There, it, it sounds like, you, Lil, your point is that the the brutality of it is serves the serves the message of the story well in that you know this cycle of violence is. If, so like, so like, and if it's the world storytelling wise, yes. I don't. I'm not gonna say that. Oh, it's worth them all going through all that because like it wasn't right. Like nothing's worth. Making yeah, people do all traumatizing real human beings. Yeah. But like the story, uh, the story that, that that they ended up telling was a good one. Um, yeah. Like like like. like People complain about the, 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 the like you know the beginning of the, of the game and like fighting them feeling fucking arduous because the game's so long. But like, it's supposed to be painful. Like, it's not supposed to be that fun to go around killing everybody. Like, yeah, right. Ellie, but they made it so it, fun to do. They made the <laughs> gameplay so fun. Yeah, like, there, I, what's the point of that? There is an element of like ludonarrative narrative dissonance, right? Where, where they're still making a game and they want it to be fun, but also like, right? And, and like, you can pre-order it and like get a better gun, <laughs> kill people better. Like, that's not great for the story you're trying to tell. Yeah, yeah. Um, they gamify like they're they're simultaneously trying to gamify violence, which is a you know a very normalized thing in the games industry. But at the same time, they're also trying to tell a story that is con extremely condemning of violence, which is like you, yeah. you end up at a very it, strange it, impasse. It's a weird like, juggling act that I'm not sure that they quite nail. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I think that because a lot of it, like even when you're when you're fighting people who are just like, regular like zombies, whatever, like those those don't really get much of a reaction. Yeah. Um. But fighting people like. Every NPC is named. Like, yeah, they did you do shoot that. Somebody, and the dogs. Yeah, like, like you, oh, you shoot God. anybody, and like, when when their friends find them, their friends are upset, and like they are upset that that you killed their friend that they know by name. Yeah, um, yeah. There's real so, like, human like, connections. It's not just an like. I mean, it is an NPC, but it is an NPC that with an extremely fleshed out backstory that like right. you can conceive of, and. And like and like for me, I didn't know that the twist was coming. I I didn't know that I was going to be playing as right. Um, and I think that probably that. helped a lot um, hmm. because like you got to ride the story and see how it goes. And yeah. then I was just kind of dreading getting there. And then when I got there, I I just stopped for the night and then came back the next day. Hmm. Like I thought that that Abby that that Abby flashback was just going to be like a one time like flashback, and then it just didn't end. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm just going to have to play. Oh shit, we're it's still like, going. Fifty percent like of the game, yeah. 
Yeah, mm. uh, I, I, I really, I thought that was, in the g- gameplay-wise, she's, she's different than Ellie because she's much more str- she's strong. Mm. Um, so, like, Ellie needs a knife. Abby just beats the shit out of you. Right. Um, I did like that the gameplay is different between them. But uh, I feel like they, they did do a lot to try to villainize Ellie. She, she has no non-lethal kills. Like, Abby can, like, punch people out and knock them unconscious, but Ellie can only ever s- slit their throat. Yeah, That's the only I don't think Abby was trying to be non-lethal. I think Abby just did right. a knife. Like <laughs> Abby will, with, with with momentum, those punches, they're fucking dead. Like she like puts her fist through some fucking bones. Like that'd be advanced. She just fucking Kali Maz Ellie at the end. That'd be fucking um, insane. Have you seen it? <laughs> no, no, I haven't seen it. I know that was another thing I wanted to ask. Is that I, I've heard another like general complaint. I don't know if you have it or not, Brad, but um. I think people are starting to get tired of these nar- super narrative focused games that are very linear up until like the the eleventh hour, and then there's like a press X or press Y choice, and then you get two slightly different there endings. There's no choice. There wasn't yeah. a choice. There's oh. no choice. No. Okay. Huh. Uh, I think a lot of people. I I wasn't upset about the ending, but I think a lot of people were upset that you didn't get that choice at the end. Oh really? But okay. Giving you that and choice. And people are upset in the first one too about that. Mm. Yeah, like giving you that choice would have undercut the whole game. Okay, I if, I don't if, know if where I let, heard that from then because I thought they, they did get a choice. Abby, it would have it would have been a fucking joke of, a, of of like the whole game talking how the cycle of violence is bad and in the last moment Ellie remembering forgiving Joel and then she still kills Abby. That would have been absurd. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know where I, I heard that from. I do have one that. complaint about that ending part. I don't think the finger biting off was necessary there. I don't think she had or, to lose her fingers. I mean, like, you can argue that a lot of the violence is necessary. Excessive. It, it fits into the universe, right? I, I don't think her, her losing her fingers was excessive in that, like, it is a physical like manifestation of Ellie who is not going to be the same. Right, like, like the right. Ellie that came back has lost everyone around her. Right, like, that's the other thing. The ending than, was so bleak. Yeah, it's at bleak. least to me. <laughs> to, yeah, it's bleak. Welcome to The Last of Us. Mm. Like, I mean, like the first one didn't have that bleak. It had like a hopeful kind yeah, of really. ending. The first one ended with Joel lying to Ellie, killing all of the Fireflies, and damning the human race for all eternity. Like the first one didn't end happily. People. Oh, that was the other thing. <laughs> Is the human race really damned? I mean, like, yeah. Jackson Jackson has a city, they have electricity, the WFLF is living in this huge community, the Scars have their island, they all seem to be doing fine. And we're all still gonna, anytime you ever breathe in a spore or get bit by a zombie, you're dead. Like, right. it's yeah. gonna be a permanent... They're, they're never gonna be free of, of, of the virus, is, is like, the but thing. But the, uh, you know, the, the infected aren't in Jackson, and they're not in the uh, WFLF stadium. Like, they're defended, they have electricity, they have livestock they have like they're growing crops we could have had it, it's like saying like we don't need a po- like a vaccine for polio because nobody in my house has polio right like it's still right like it, it's still a disease that we could have cured that we could have saved people from that we could have theoretically averted the course of of, of human history away from having to become this survivalist society mm. possibly reclaiming what, what we used to be if we're no longer vulnerable to these zombies like sure they can still physically kill you but their numbers are now capped, not making any more. And right. one day, we'll be could be free. Right? That's no longer a hope for us. Mm-hmm. I, uh, short, short of like finding every spore and burning them away, which is not going to happen, we're dead. Do you think that the fireflies, as they were presented in the first game, would have been able to successfully distribute that cure? Or do you think they? I'm not so sure because every time you see them, they're getting like annihilated. You travel across oh, the but- country to find these guys, and every time you get to them, they're just dead or gone. I don't know if they, they like whether they had the infrastructure. Like I don't know, right? Like once you have a viable vaccine, the amount of power you have goes up infinitely, right? Because mm. the fireflies could give that to I don't, I don't they, like theoretically they could hold it to themselves and do some right. funny thing, but they could also just go to Fedra and go to like like the the QZs and distribute vaccines. Distribute right? it. I don't know whether, whether they have the manufacturing capability yet. Once you have a viable sample, you know how to make it. That knowledge can be disseminated, and that knowledge can save. Well, anybody. the thing about the knowledge is Ellie's the only source of the cure, right? And she only has a limited amount of the fungus in her head. And if they kill her, it's not like it's going to grow back. Well, so, so how are they going to replicate I, it? 
they needed to extract the sample to study it. They didn't need to extract the sample to use it. Um, theoretically, from what from the way that it was presented, right, is this is how we will find out what we have to do in order to make a viable vaccine. Because otherwise, oh. that will otherwise killing Ellie was not going to save the human race. It would save like twelve people. Right, that's what and, I'm and, saying. And, and they would have talked about it that way, right? They, they, if, if they were concerned about saving a handful of people, I don't think that that choice would have. I, I doubt Abby's dad would have been okay with killing Ellie. I, Abby wouldn't have been okay with saying, "If it was me, kill me." Marlene wouldn't have been okay with letting her surrogate daughter die. Right? This would. This was a much bigger deal than just the spores that existed in her blood. Right, this was knowing how to save people, and once you know how to do it, because we can replicate that and save anybody. Mm. The thing that bothers me about all that is that it feels like that was written into the second game to kind of try to justify it and bring it back to the Firefly side. Because as presented in the first game, like you don't get any of that stuff. That stuff they added in the second game to well, kind of I mean, but know, make isn't... it more like Joel did the wrong thing. It sounds... I mean, it, you can argue he did do the wrong thing. Even in the first game, Marlene is like, we have to do this, right? Marlene, the person who raised Ellie, the person who, who, who told you to get Ellie across the country to, for, in the hope of, you know, of doing this, who is the one person who gives a shit about Ellie before Joel does, is okay with, the, with this choice. She's not happy about it. You can see that in the first game, but she's still okay with making the choice because of what it means. Mm. Right? So... Them saying we're gonna make a cure isn't we're gonna cure a few people. It's we're gonna cure everybody. This is this right. is the end of Cordyceps. Yeah. I'm just not sure they could have done it, considering what they were. But anyways, we can we can move on to something else. I, I see what you're well, saying. Well, I I think this this does bring up a good thematic question, which it, it it sounds like to me it seems like the theme of the second game. Like you're 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 you were saying that you don't know about all these other characters involved with uh, that Joel kills at the end of the first game. It sounds like the one of the main themes of the second game is unforeseen consequences to your actions. There are yes, very is- there are very seen consequences to your actions, which is obviously damning the human race. But then, you know, that's where the second game steps in and says there's even more to it where you're personally affecting human beings' lives by you know, murdering. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. The game does a lot to humanize every faction. Like, Abby is... They, they, they call the Seraphites the Scars. Scars call the W off the Wolves. They have these terms that dehumanize the other side. And Abby's story is about her, like, meeting Seraphites who are just kids, and they have to work together, and they start seeing each other as people. Mm. Right? And, and then... And, and the whole swap is you going from Ellie, just seeing them as more bad guys you've got to kill, to like, right. hey, that was a person. Right? Yeah. That was the person that I had to put a knife in the in his neck. Yeah. I had to do it. Yeah. Um, arguably, I had to do it, but it was still a person who's now dead. Yeah. Right? And um, it's and that's like kind of that was you know because they weren't really addressing that story in the first game. So you were going, you basically it sounds like you were transitioning from the playstyle and morality heads like headspace that you had playing as Joel in the first game. You transitioned that into the second game with Ellie, who had, you know, kind of the same deal where it's just like, look, I just have to kill these people. It's just how it is over into more of a, like humanizing them more in the second half of the second game, um, which I don't and know. Abby is like very villainized for the first half of the game. because That's how the game's written from, from Ellie's perspective. Yeah. But, but then when you play through it as Abby, Abby has two chances to kill Ellie. She, yeah, she doesn't does. take either one. She mm. lets her live twice. Yeah, um, she was probably gonna kill Dina the first time around, the second time around, but Lev stopped her because um, Lev was like, "She, Abby, what the fuck?" And she was like, "Okay." And let I think she would have killed Ellie too if Lev didn't stop her. Um, I think she would have slit Dina's throat and then finished Ellie off. But right. but either way, right? By the end of the game, she's let them live twice, and then at the end of the game, so after uh, Ellie goes home. And then they eventually find Abby again. And so, uh, so the end of the game, essentially, after the back and forth, and there's a whole confrontation, mm-hmm. um, and Abby let, lets them live, and she leaves with this this kid, Lev, who she met, who's one of the scars, and they're trying to find the Fireflies. They go, they go to Santa Barbara. They go to Santa Barbara, and they get captured by slavers. Um, right. And after finding out where the Firefly outpost is, because like, they're like, hey, we're going to go there, and they're really happy, then they get captured. And then you cu- it cuts to Ellie, and you're playing through, and then eventually you find out that Abby was captured by slavers like four months ago. Oh. Um, and so you fight your way through like the slaver compound. You free the you free the um the, the, the slaves prisoners, and the prisoners, yeah. and they go to fight 
the people who are their captors, and Abby and Lev have been chained up on the posts or whatever. Don't you just like left the to crucifixes starve me. or whatever those are? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like left to starve me, fed on by the crows. Like they're like she's probably already dead. Um, so she at this point she's gaunt. She's been working as a slave for four months. Um, Lev is even worse condition, barely even alive. She cuts them down, and Abby leads them to the boats. Um, and they're gonna leave, and Abby's like, and Ellie's like, I can't let you go, right? So again, Ellie's like, I'm not, I'm going to kill you, and Abby's like, I'm not gonna fight you. Mm. Abby does not want to fight her, even then, until she threatens to kill Lev, just because Abby right. won't fight her, right? I thought so, like, that Ellie's triple face heel turn at the end there was kind of strangely done, because she finds Abby and she feels bad. She's like, you know what, I'm gonna cut you down. And then she has a flashback of Joel, and she's like, no, I have to kill you. And then she has a flashback of Joel, and she's like, never mind, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> it's just well, so, the, the, so, so the first flashback of Joel, for context, is Joel bleeding out on the floor after Abby killed her. Yeah. A- a- after Abby killed him. Yeah. And the second one yes, is, yeah. after this like long, drawn-out fight, she is choking Abby underwater. Mm-hmm. Um, Abby Abby's bit off her fingers, to... she's choking yeah. Abby underwater. And yeah. Abby's about to die, and she has a flashback of this moment of Joel playing a guitar. And then, and then Ellie says, just go. And then the whole scene from that plays out, and it's the scene, because in part of the flashbacks of the game are Ellie uh, finding out for sure that Joel lied to her. Right. Ah, okay. And she's like, we're done. I don't want to talk to you ever again. Um, and then the night before Joel dies, there's this, this guy uh, calls Ellie a dyke, uh, and Joel's like, what the fuck? And then and Ellie's like, I can handle myself. I don't want anything to do with you, right? Because it's been like probably a year or two years since they talked. It's like two years later at that point. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and then eventually Ellie goes up to talk to, to Joel. Um, and it's like, what you did is unforgivable, but I'd like to try to forgive you anyway. Um, and that was the night before Joel died. Mm-hmm. Um, right, and then he dies the next morning. That's the moment that Ellie remembers, and that's when she like lets go of Abby and lets her go. Okay. Right. I I, I like that that the uh, she's remembering that scene, but I think that maybe if they had added a little thing with like Lev waking up and like begging not to kill Abby, to kind of make it so Ellie sees herself becoming like Abby too, and then she remembers Joel that last flashback, and she's able to forgive. She sees herself in Lev. And then she's able to forgive Joel and Abby at the same time. I feel like that would have made it a little stronger for me. I don't know if it would have worked for everybody, but I, I think that would have been good. I think as is, it's still pretty good. I think Lev waking up could have been nice. I think they kind of did really layer on the they're the same. <laughs> yeah, same, they did. same but the same. First they Abby did. mission because the first Abby mission essentially is just what if you played the Ellie mission again with Ellie's pregnant friend. Oh, I mean, Abby's pregnant friend and Abby's ethnic other friend as they get their guns and then they go talk to their animal companion. Mm. And it's like it's like the exact same mission that you do at the beginning of the game, just again with Abby. And it's very like layered on thick. And like it's good, but I don't know if it. I don't know if subtlety was their best. It, that was their best. <laughs> yeah, <moment. laughs> I think I think some more nuance could have been beneficial because they hit you yeah. very hard over the head with a lot of the messages. Like mm. it's constantly like revenge, bad, revenge, bad, revenge, bad. And I think maybe it, it did need a little more subtlety, like you were saying. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, honestly, at the end of the day, it sounds like, y- y- you know, you, you have some different opinions about specifics. But overall, it seems like it tells, at the very least, it's a story worth talking about. Um, yeah, it's I mean, definitely created a discussion. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's intrigued me enough that I might actually go through and, and play through the, the both games. Like, I think for me, even though I know what happens, I'm interested to see my personal feelings once I see it in action and, you know, acting right. out and stuff like that. Um, well, I think you definitely should get that first game experience as well. Yeah. No, yeah. Probably play you both can of see, them. see, like, the parallels. Under- that they understand them both. Yeah. Um, hey, do you kind of agree with criticisms is that i'm not sure if you if the uh eugene's death was like eugene necessary. oh fuck that's not his name wait who is he <laughs> uh jesse jesse was it jesse jesse Je- yeah. yeah yeah so there's a lot of scenes in the game where you know they're having this conversation and then all of a sudden, the character you're talking to is just shot in the head for, like, by a character from off screen. Oh. I think they do that three or four times. Jesus. That's kind of um, fucked up. 
So I, I, what was usually so like usually it's in a combat scenario. Okay. It's like, it is usually in a combat scenario. But still, okay. you are like mid conversation or like yeah, just talking to them. It, it's like, not entirely shock value. If it's yeah, okay. But so the, what was with this Jesse character specifically? Was it just like another one that they layered on that was like? It, it's the end of Ellie's you know, playtime at the end of her third day when you're about to switch to Abby. And uh, you've just killed Abby's last couple friends. You're there at the theater where Mm -hmm. their headquarters is. And they're like, all right, we're going to head back to Seattle. You know what? It's okay if Abby lives. We just have to go home because Dina's pregnant and she's sick and we need to get her back. And Abby had found their location because of a thing that happens earlier. Mm -hmm. And she uh, takes out this one guy, Tommy, who is Joel's brother. And... Ellie and Jesse hear it and they grab their guns and they run through a door. And the minute they step through the door, Jesse just gets headshot. Oh, it's like watching a, uh, a CSGO game. <laughs> she does really snap to his head. It's fucking crazy. Oh, my she God. does. But then she, she misses the next two shots on Ellie. Like they're just wildly off. She just beamed, mm. beamed Jesse. Mm. They were they they were they were still riding the high too hard from from getting that uh, insta lock headshot. Uh, I liked Jesse, their, man. Their I, I liked shots. him. Yeah, mm. I liked Owen, but then he becomes like a his character kind of becomes one dimensional, and he's just like, I want to leave my girlfriend and be with you, Abby, and that kind of becomes his whole thing. He becomes obsessed. With, yeah, with Abby. Interesting. Like at the beginning, he's he's talking about how he regrets, you know, what they did torturing joel and how he he's started to see the uh the seraphites as human beings mm-hmm. and then uh abby's like are you kidding me you need to grow up and then he's like i need to grow up should i just go hunt down my family travel 800 miles to go hunt them down and then they get into like a little bit of an altercation and then they have sex oh and then from that point on <laughs> Owen's that was only the scene my dad walked in oh yeah, yeah, lovely is, right <laughs> yeah, and then from that point on the only thing he really talks about is, you know, he's like, Abby, you should come with us to Santa Barbara. Abby, I, you know, we need to talk about this. Abby. And he, she's like, you have Mel. And he's like, Abby, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sounds like he's sipping. She's pregnant. Sounds like oh, that boy really do be simping. From, like, like he, he was like a lot more interesting before that. And then. Yeah. He, he's in like maybe three or four scenes. <laughs> um, but the scenes are either about Lev and Yara or about him trying to get Abby to go over like yeah Abby, Abby, that was like a, not a bad plot point but it was interesting only in the context of Mel and abby owen was kind of just fucking yeah. around there who, existing who I like i thought tommy was super cool in that sniper scene oh yeah he was pretty badass there i he i thought it was really neat that they have him use the sniper rifle to lure infected and on oh, that yeah. note I liked that they could uh, they gave you opportunities to pit the infected against humans. I wish they gave you more chances to do that. I think they do it like twice, mm. and then once at the end, and then as Abby, the the wolves fight the scars on her day. That's but I thought that was really cool, and I would like to see more of that. You know, I, I maybe maybe I'm I'm missing more context, but that seems like a pretty fucked up thing to do, especially in a game that's trying to teach you that the cycle of violence bad like sicking zombies on on human beings just sounds well, like humans who are trying to kill you yeah right. yeah and basically the context is fight the humans fight the zombies F- fight the humans and zombies fight you fight the zombies the humans fight you or make them fight each other and then you can like, deal with the remnants afterwards i see right okay it's like letting the flood fight the covenant you know yeah I mean, kind of not so much let as as much as Gravemind just the these these co- the Covenant just really love the Holy Ring and they don't understand the Flood and they just keep going back despite how many times they get fucked up by the Flood. Um, but yeah, I, I get that. So there was just no option to just fight the fight the zombies, the clickers. It's just like yeah, you could if you want. No, you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of like, like a just normal engagement, but if you throw a bottle. Like the zombies will run to the bottle and the humans will check it out. Oh, uh, so and you'll just throw a bottle near a human, then they're just gonna run at the humans. Yeah, it's 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 much harder to distract only the zombies and like in, interact with them. You can't separate yeah. them wholly. Okay, like you gotta play it straight stealth mm-hmm. because the minute that there's noise, like they're, they're gonna on you. both parties. You, right? Okay, yeah. I see. Interesting. Um, um yes, that and gameplay wise, that sounds cool. Context. Hmm. I think it works a lot better in context than from the isolated leaks that show all the stuff that people didn't really want to happen. Right. It, uh, I mean, I could definitely see 
like villainizing Ellie in that context and killing Joel halfway or a quarter way through the beginning. It's the beginning. It's the first two hours. Oh, okay. Very early on then. Yeah. I could see why that would make people angry because they were attached to those characters that, you know, was the whole game for the first game. Um, but But, it uh, it serves the story, I guess is, is what the conclusion seems like. It's not a perfect game for me, but I, I, they they did a lot of things right. The graphics are great. That guitar mini game is so good. I've oh. I played like real songs on that. It's really good. <laughs> um, I said the graphics, the rope physics were really cool. Like, oh, I yeah. think you'd appreciate that. Okay. They did some real rope physics. Why? Um, why me specific? I mean, I guess I'm a GDD. Yeah, but yeah, yeah there you I go. Don't know. Uh, physics physics engine engine had, be the, cool. had the ladders. This game has the the rope. Rope. Set. Yeah. Mm. The soundtrack's great. Um. I feel like a lot of the environments were really cool. One thing that this is like a dumb thing, but this was kind of more just my own personal taste. I felt like a lot of the encounters were kind of super open and it, it felt a little detrimental for me. Like, like you have a lot of, of opportunities. Or... Let, let me try to find an example. There's a, there's a part in Ellie's day two where you're at like this house and because the environment is so open, they pack it with like, 15 enemies where if you shoot a bullet they're all going to hear you and rush at you mm. and i felt like that was a little overdone and it could have maybe benefited from splitting that up a little bit interesting I, like, again, like I, the, wasn't, I was never really pushed to use the environment like if that makes right sense. like i, uh, I, 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 I did would use... like i i get a couple of stealth kills but i'd fuck up the stealth and I'd be yeah like, all right yep, time, that. To just, time to just stand and deliver and I just pull out the shotgun and, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and get behind cover and i pull out like, a different gun i'm like and then it's like, all you right. You played a little different than I did. I went for stealth as much as possible, and then someone would see me, and I would sprint away, jump out a window, dive in the tall grass, and wait for them to leave me alone, and then try to stealth them all again. <laughs> I would just be like, I'm scared. They're coming at me. Yeah. I don't know where to go. I'm just going to jump. I was playing on an easier difficulty, so it was a lot easier to find like bullets and stuff, so I wasn't as worried that I would be like, you know, mm. like, 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 you, you could, to, like, you could Rambo a little bit harder than Brad could, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. A easier difficulty. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crafting, crafting system was really good. Mm-hmm. The new combat additions, like the prone and like explosive arrows and silencers, those were all great. Uh, would have liked that, me- like, aerial melee attack, considering they give you that jump button. You know, you're jumping off something and then you're like, but instead you go, you go, was it was it something that they had in the first game, or did is it just because no, they it's didn't there? Have a jump button. It feels like it should be there, but it isn't in the second right. game. Just, they just added. for me, because there there are a couple spots where like you can run up a ramp and then jump down onto an enemy who's there, mm. and then you just kind of land and then they hit you. Yeah, that's weird. If they if they set up a scenario where it seems like you should be able to jump down and, and get literally get the jump on an enemy, you think they'd design combat well it's also mechanics. not supposed to be assassin's creed but i feel like maybe just like a you know jumping yeah. swing well, then, I'd be, but then you just wouldn't design the environment to have like that be a thing that would there's make a good players bit of vertic- there's a good bit yeah of they wanted to be more and vertical enemies are gonna like drop down it's just like hmm. there was the, the, so you could make like like essentially like like, like landmines okay um, when you're playing with ellie yeah those were good um, i like those and like they were comedic. So, like, they weren't supposed to be. But when you think of humans, they were actually kind of funny. Oh. Just because of how ridiculous they were. Oh, God. Um, I remember this part where there was, in Santa Barbara, there's a part in, in a house where there's, like, a staircase. And then there's, like, yeah. a, like, like yeah. a balcony. And they drop down the balcony. And I died a couple times. And I was like, ah, well, I know they're going to drop from there to land right here. So I put a mine where they were going to land. <laughs> and I'm back into cover. And they just fell. And then they were gone. Oh like, no! <laughs> like the body landed back on the ledge, and the legs <laughs> were like on the stairs, and I was like, "Okay, Holy I get shit. the violence bad, but this is the kind of funny." Jesus. Yeah, they give you they give you some really cool tools, and I thought that was neat. The uh, the weapon upgrading is cool. Yeah. I like that the the little details are insane. Like they uh, whenever you upgrade your weapon, the weapon icon changes to match the upgrade. Like the Ooh. thing that you attach, if you put a scope on a weapon, the weapon icon now has a scope for the rest of the game. That's pretty cool. Like that's really cool. Yeah, good uh, there's quality a, life stuff. The museum flashback was probably my favorite bit, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, but they had a very cool thing where you can look in the mirror as Ellie, and you move the thumbstick, and it changes her facial expression. And you know, most games like Little Big Planet, you like push a direction, and your guy goes. <laughs> but uh, this one. You could like push it to the side, and she goes like this, and then you push it down, and she kind of like fluidly moves to like. Oh man, 
Yeah, it's I not. It's not like instantaneous. Cool. Like it's. It's like mocap yeah, very it's well. Just like fluid. You can fully, stop in between them. Hmm. Like it was very fully neat. Pulling faces in the mirror and like. Yeah, yeah, and going like this and like <laughs> doing the faces. <laughs> Who is? It was is very, it, very good. It's that's it's Ashley Johnson, right? Who plays Ellie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Ellie. yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm definitely personal bias just because I see her a lot on Critical Role, but I, it seems like she's a very good at her job, uh, and I hope. You know, it, it seems like a lot of she, she, along with a lot of the other main actors, were getting a lot of flack after the game, which is like one ridiculous because yeah, like you're literally actors. they're you're literally yelling at people who don't write this. They're they're just right. acting, and like I don't know. Even if you if you, if you, even if you severely disagree with the story choices choices they made, it sounds like they acted it out well. Um, they they definitely did. The acting is very good. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah. It was just I had some disagreements with some story things, but aside from that, it was it was really great. Yeah. I'm not sure if I can play through it again because it's very long. I I mean, it just sounds like it sounds so depressing that I wouldn't want to play through it a second time. Like it's like it's like a it's like fucking watching Schindler's, Schindler's List or something where you're just Somebody, like a journalist compared it to that and got you know chewed out on Twitter for doing it. I don't, I don't know. That's it seems somewhat apt. Where it's just like it is is a movie worth watching to understand. You know. Get get a get the message that they're trying to get across, which is an important message to uh, put out there. But then it is just such a bummer that like you you just so taxed after the fact. That you're like, yeah, I, I I understand the message. It is a good message to convey, but I just need to rest and you know play fucking Fall Guys or whatever right. <laughs> afterwards. There's a there's a part at the end of the Wait, game no, that I was. No, no, go ahead. I'll I'll chime in a second. Uh, on a second playthrough. Like once you know the story, it's a lot less like because you know what's what's coming up, mm. um, and it's not a game of just sadness. There's moments of levity, especially in your flashbacks. Okay. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they it, give you it, some it, it, you know flashback moments, but it's just flashbacks, you know. Yeah. Um, like a lot of the, like, a lot of the modern day stuff is pretty is, is pretty dark. Uh, bleak. Yeah. Mm. Um, but like like even then like like I feel like the second playthrough like it's less about the story and more about just like getting better at like the, the mechanics trying of the new game, stuff which, which are yeah. a lot of fun right like shit like, uh, like th- things like even in a very depressing part of the game if you put down a mine and the, uh, and like somebody falls on it it's still like it's still it's, funny it, 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 it's, it's still like grunt birthday party like they're gone <laughs> oh, jesus christ there was a part near the end of the game so i did the the la boss fight as abby which yeah. I was very disappointed about when I heard about oh, it. Oh, that's the movie. choice. Okay, maybe that was the one I was thinking of. So you get to choose between fighting no. as Ellie or... No, no. no. You're, you fight as Abby and you beat up Ellie. Oh, okay. Wait. And there's there's a scene where you like you have to press square to strangle her and like her eyes start bulging out of her head and she looks like she's genuinely asphyxiating. Yeah. Uh, I just I didn't press the button and the game just keeps going anyways. I was uh, curious, but the pressing the buttons there doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Sometimes you just gotta get. No, there, there's a part after that where I, I knew that Ellie loses there, and then you you have this little thing on the farm where she has like an idyllic life, and it's like this is what she's leaving behind. And mm-hmm. I thought that after that you go straight to the last thing with Ellie and Santa Barbara looking for Abby. I didn't know there's another sequence with Abby in between. And when I got to that part. I, it hit me that I had no idea how much was left. Like if there was still going to be like another <laughs> 10 hours of this and I, I couldn't take it. And I just had to stop. Like I was completely burnt out by that point. Mm. Yeah. Does, uh, doesn't sound like you can, it and, doesn't sound like a game that you can finish in, in one sitting for, for most. No, it's some guy tried to uh, XQC. Oh yeah. He, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he streamed it the first day because he was like, I'm going to play. He played the first game. He did it for like eight hours when it came out. He's like, yeah, I'm going to do that for the second game. But the second game is twice as long. Okay, yeah. So he's like halfway through the game, and then he gets to the part with Abby, and someone in the chat types, this part is another 10 hours. (laughs) And he's he's like, he's like been playing for eight hours at this point. He's like... (laughs) He's got like that that drained, like, doomer face, where he's just like... (sighs) (laughs) Completely blacked out eyes. Oh my god. Um, I heard that it was supposed to originally be a lot longer five days for each of them Jesus. and you know what i would have i still would have played it if it was longer in that oh, respect yeah. hmm. like i I'll, I'll take more of the encounters and stuff they, they did some cool things the rat king was cool the shamblers were cool the stalkers saying, are 
fuck. You keep saying the Rat King, and I just keep thinking of fucking, like, uh, Jerma's fucking rats, rats, we're the rats. I'm the giant rat that makes all the rules. Just imagine oh, no, no, a that, giant that rat. That is what man. it is. That's what it is. Now. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> all right, you know what? You know what? I, I was I was mostly sold, but now I'm definitely sold. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna play it through. It's gonna be a great time. Um... Yeah, we've we've killed an hour here, so I'm I'm glad this did carry. I wasn't I wasn't exactly sure because I I think you know as we got into it more, it se- it seems like, uh, there you know you guys you guys had differences, but uh, but like could agree on a lot of stuff as well, and like just had different viewpoints on it, and I don't know, it's a very mature conversation about it. And I I feel like I learned a lot. Um, but I'm it's, glad there it's was... definitely not a bad game. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, some people aren't going to like the story. And the creator said it. He said, like, half of the fans are going to hate this story. Yeah, very, it came out. possibly very div- divisive because they right. made a lot so, like, of... A lot of the criticism is, like, so, well, some of it's valid, but a lot of it that I'm seeing is, like, less, like, I think part of the story and more, like, Abby, big arm bad. <laughs> Yeah, that's dumb. That's so <laughs> dumb. Like, like, like there, the last one subreddit is a fucking about. shit show. Oh god. Yeah, that's a Yikes. mess. There was um, there's one other thing, and, I, and now I kind of wish that we had Pat here for this, but I remember that a complaint that he brought up um, with with the game that seemed a little bit more valid was that they there's there's a trans character in the game, and that they there they, they dead name them uh, periodically. Uh, it's a uh, I, I think we can explain this one. Like, sure, I'm, I'm no all one, ears. No one in that community wants that to happen, but in the context of the game, basically, this this guy uh, shaves his head, mm-hmm. and biologically, they were born a female, female at birth, and yeah. they were they were going to be the child bride to an elder when they wanted to be a soldier because they identified that they are a man. Uh, right. Yeah. And so they run away from home mm-hmm. and the cult finds them and they call this character Lev by uh, his birth name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is not Lev. Yeah. 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 And that is when it happens. And then his storyline later on is he returns to the Island that he ran away from mm-hmm. to uh, convince his mother to, Except that he is not a girl, and to leave the island with him because it's about to get destroyed by the uh, the wolves. Mm, okay. And that scene ends with his mom trying to kill him, and hitting her head on the table and dying. Jesus. Wait, the and the mom that, dies or the mom the mom dies okay. and the kid is traumatized. Yeah. That uh, his mom tried to kill him for being trans. And yeah, you and his and then you as Abby and his sister like manage to get to the house and like and to save him. Yeah, um, but that's like it's after that, all. That, 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 that's after all this happens, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I guess like I think from what I understand, I don't mean to speak on past behalf, but it seems like that that could ruffle feathers in the sense of it might be hearkening to the bury your gaze trope or, or in this case traumatize your your gaze or, or trans trans folks in in this sense um well they also have traumatize ellie right no and that's what and now that i have a better understanding of the game it sounds like no everybody just gets traumatized all around Everyone. it's a very it's a yeah. very brutal game in that sense and one so of the two main characters is one of the gays and gets very much traumatized yeah, yeah right right true um and also the straights also get uh, very uh, traumatized as well. <laughs> Every character gets annihilated. Everybody um, gets fucked up equally, and I guess at that point it's just a matter of like, do you think that that method of you know being so brutally realistic in that sense is like a productive way of of telling these types of stories? Which it's, I think that's a very nuanced argument that one could have. I don't think I have a strong opinion one way or the other on. Um, it sounds like you guys enjoyed it, or at least Will did for the most part, and then Brad also enjoyed I parts mean, like, of it, but yeah. it may have been a bit of excessive. Went to my high school. What? Lev's voice actor went to my high school. Oh, that's cool. Really? Yeah. That's Ian Alexander, cool. he was the one who actually made it at, made it in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's also trans, so they, ah. they were casting, they specifically casted him. That's really cool. Was he, was he one of your, one of your theater kids? That you're... Uh, no, I don't think he did theater. He was like a year, a year or two younger than me. Mm. So um, it was at the same time you were there. there. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Wow. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely curious to see if in my playthrough because I I think I've had varying opinions about you know how 
video games handle violence and like excessiveness of it. Obviously, I remember being back in uh, middle school or high school and writing essays about how you know trying trying to be the rebellious uh gamer defendant um being like video games don't cause people to be violent and i and i still i still agree with that opinion video games don't directly correlate to people becoming violent but i think i have as i've matured i have come to understand you know there are uh aspects of the sensitive desensitization that can occur because of the way we consume media, especially in the United States where I think it's a lot more common for violence to be accepted over other themes such as like sexually related stuff. Um, you know, the common analogy is like in Japan, you can't do anything super violent, but you can be as sexual as you want and it's fine. And then it's kind of the flip side in America. Um, so I'm very curious if I play through it and, and I'm, I want to see how I feel about uh how how violent they make this experience and if it just uh, if the story and the message they're trying to convey, convey really justifies it um and i think anybody watching that hasn't you know played it yet and is intrigued by this you know even though you've been basically spoiled on everything uh no no he, definitely not dude it's it's 30 hours no like, that's true so too many, yeah there's, there's, a, there's a lot of characters we didn't get a chance to we didn't even on. mention like half of the characters in the game okay interesting um but yeah so i i guess i kind of want to wrap it up here but um yeah definitely sounds like a game at least worth giving a shot to and and forming your own opinions on uh definitely just don't you know go just jump on whatever bandwagon's happening i think um i i think that like you said brad i think uh the leaks coming out and people just sort of latching onto the p- little pieces they had really set for a negative tone for the game's release. So and um, part of it was those were, you know, th- th- at least the videos; those were real. Those were from the game, right? Like it wasn't just like fake stuff. But you're not it getting the whole like picture. The order they presented it in, you right? Know, exactly. Um, so you gotta, you gotta, you know, do some research. You get get a little bit more involved in things before you before you pass final judgment. So. Um, yeah, I think that's a good note to leave it on. Thank you guys for both coming on and uh, talking to me yeah, about sure. this. I've, I've enjoyed listening, and I hope everybody who's watching uh, enjoyed it as well. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, one other thing I wanted to mention just for housekeeping, maybe I should have done this at the beginning of the show, but as I've gotten settled into work and I'm figuring out um, what I want to do for uh, myself and, and the streaming schedule, I think I'm going to shift the hours back from 7 to 9 to 7.30 to 9.30. It gives me a little bit more time to get home, and I'm going to try and exercise uh, for on weekdays now and get that done after I get home, eat dinner, shower, and then start the stream. So I'll update the stream schedule so that reflects there accordingly. Um, horsing around still going to be the same time because that's on the weekend, so it doesn't really matter. But, uh, yeah, so with all that out of the way, uh, thanks for watching, and stay safe out there. Peace. Turn this thing off.